Yeah, I've caught a few fish over the years, so it's, it's really hard to pick which one's my favourite because uh, some of them I like for different reasons, the way they looked, because the water was hard, because it was pressured. But the one that really sticks to mind was from the Five Mile Reservoir. I, uh, sort, of, I sort of gained permission to get access to this reservoir. And when I say access, I mean to walk around it, not to fish. But uh, my whole plan was to bloody well fish it. And uh, I started walking around it. And at the time, I think like every carp angler gets it through their, their fishing life. I was a bit disillusioned with the carp scene. And um, I wanted to get away from it and just immerse myself in a bit of mystery and something a bit new. And this reservoir offered that. It had once held carp, but to knowledge, it hadn't done a fish in years. And um, I started to walk around it, probably way too early in the year, in February. And yeah, February turned into March. And eventually, I think it was mid-May, before I'd, I had spots that I was baiting where some bait had disappeared. And um, sort of, it was, it was crazy, because there was actually times where I sort of questioned my sanity because I'd walk around this five mile reservoir, sometimes twice in a day, even three times one time, and not see a fish. But um, the day came, you know, when it was going to be obvious. It was about mid-May time, and I'd baited up the day before, and then got back down early the next morning, and I walked the mile and a half to this particular spot that was a little corner spot. And um, as I approached this spot, there was a sheep fence to keep the sheep from falling in the reservoir. And I don't know why, it was, like, it was like a sixth sense. Something said to me, there's going to be fish in this corner. And I dropped down on my hands and knees and I crawled up. And when I looked down, there they were, three carp. And uh, honestly, it was like I'd caught one. I was so excited just seeing these fish. I couldn't put weights on them because the, the reservoir was deep and gin clear, concrete sided. But I just backed off, turned, and I ran a mile and a half back to my car. And it was a warm day, so by that point, I'm soaking wet, dripping with sweat. I grabbed two rods, a little bag and a mat, and then I turned and I ran back. When I got back to the corner, the fish had gone, but the evidence was left, you know, the like cotton wool weed had been parted. So I literally put a rig on, a little snowman bait, and I just lowered it exactly where these fish had been feeding and undid the clutch. I then walked off to see if I could find these fish and I'd probably walked a hundred yards when I come across the common. There was two mirrors in the common feeding. So I quickly flicked a bait in front of him and this fish is now circling over this yellow pop-up. Bearing in mind, they, they probably don't even know what a boil he is. I'd mainly been baiting with sweet corn and tigers and that was due to the crayfish, the mitten crabs. Anything that could be against you on this place was against you. Anyway, this common circling the bait, and I'm thinking, do you know what? He actually looks interested. I wouldn't mind getting a second rod just in case he moves on again. So I turned and I'm walking down to the rod that I've left sort of 100 yards away laying on concrete. And as I got to it, I noticed the spool was spinning. I couldn't believe it. This one had come in and picked up the bait. I ran down and I picked up the rod, and this fish was absolutely flying. It was already 60, 70 yards out in 25 foot and I picked it up and the line just came out of the water and it was like a washing line. It was all this silkweed hanging off it. And eventually it got to the fish and it rolled on the surface. And I thought, bloody hell, imagine catching like a 25 pounder. No one's ever touched, you know what I mean? They've never caught it. And I'm pulling it closer and the weed's all sliding down now so it's covering the fish and the fish is still wallowing all across the top and I'm, I want it to go down a bit because I hate them surface fights and it's getting closer and I thought, you know what, this, this could be a 30 pounder and eventually it's under the rod tip and it's just plodding up and down and it's like this reservoir is drinking water, literally it's its last stage before it goes into the, into the waterworks and it's gin clear, 12 foot down I can see this mirror with these big apple slices, massive tail just twisting and turning. Honestly, I was crapping myself, literally. And eventually, slowly it came up and I slid the net under it. And it was mine, like, three months of not seeing a fish, let alone, like, catching a fish, questioning my own sanity. And I had a fish in a net that didn't have a name, no one had caught, and it was just, still is, like, the best feeling ever. I pulled this fish up, 
got her on the mat, cleaned her off, and I weighed her at 41 pounds and a few ounces. Yeah, it was, it was actually unbelievable. And um, I got a friend to come down and do some photos, but I think probably the best bit of catching that fish was watching her swim away into that gin clear water and think, she'll probably never again be caught. I went on to fish that reservoir for the rest of the year and had another three bites, including another good fish, a 35 pound fully scaled. And um, yeah, I'd say so far for me, it's been the pinnacle of my fishing. And uh, yeah, I found mystery, got away from the crowds. Long may that kind of fishing continue.